Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be going over the material set component. Now there's a lot going on in the world, and that's just because we've got a setup showing um, exactly how the material set component could be used in a particular avatar. I have come across this component before. I did notice when it was added, but I didn't really have a setup I could demonstrate to you, uh, you to show you how it worked. Now I do, and that's totally thanks to Stars, used by the name of Stars, who uh, came into a world I was in and uh, gave me an example that was quite easy to troll. So thanks for the, to them for that. So the example that they gave was a person who had an avatar where they wanted, um, when they placed a mask on their face, that the material set would change. And also when they left the world, as in they went away to another world, shelled out, gone away, terminology is kind of wishy-washy there, um, the same uh, away material would still apply, and they were having difficulties doing both of those eventualities. Now, I think that the material set component is a good solution for that. It's not the only solution, but it is a solution. It makes things quite easy, especially with multiple materials. We'll go ahead and show you a setup using the material set component and my avatar that should make this clearer, so let's go ahead and show you it. So I'm in a customized version of my avatar with this applied, and it's also the version of the avatar where I have that hat. If you're not quite familiar with that hat, in a few videos ago, I um, did a tutorial on how to make snapping things like bracelets and hats and stuff like that. So if you're not familiar with that concept, please do check that video. It's linked in the video description. Where you can find out how to make hats and bracelets and stuff like that. We'll be using this avatar throughout this video. So I have the hat here. You remember it and if i put it on you'll see that i've now turned into a wooden material except for my face uh, there's a reason why my face didn't change but strange but uh, you know it's fine so now my entire body is this wooden material and uh that's because i've got the hat on when i take the hat off not my face just the hat i go back to my usual material additionally now if i leave the avatar i simulate as though a user has left the avatar as in they've shelled out i can't actually show that because i don't have a multi-user setup going but trust me it'll work um let's go ahead and go over to this other version of the avatar and you'll see now that this version of the avatar here um, is now shelled out interestingly enough when i grab it it will shell back in and that's just a, a weird um part of the uh um, the way that we've got things set up. That usually won't cause a problem um, with an actual inhabited avatar that is shelled out, but uh, it will in this particular case. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild this. Um, so to get going, I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this one, including the hat, and we'll respawn out from my inventory and uh, get going. Let's go take a look. So now in smooth POV, I realize we had a bit of an odd camera angle there, so now we're in smooth POV. I'm going to go ahead and spawn the avatar again. It's uh, available in my inventory. It is my avatar, so I can't give it out. So like I said, if you've got an avatar that has a hat or anything like that, you can follow along at home. If not, check that video link in the video description for a video tutorial on how to make these hats and stuff work. Just going to turn off that mirror. It's a bit distracting. So the first thing we need to do is set up the material set components. Let's go ahead and do that. To get that sorted, I'm going to go ahead and grab the developer tooltip from my toolshelf. I'm going to go ahead and inspect my chest and hit open inspector. This will take me to the chest of my avatar. I can hit up and I'll be at the root. I've renamed things a little bit here, but uh, it should be easy to follow around. C is centered root and then uh, R is a uh, root node. What you need to do is look for your material location. If you set up your avatar, this should be quite apparent. If you don't know, that's totally fine. Ask someone to help you out or just spelunk through the avatar. You're looking for anything with a mesh render on it, particularly anything with a mesh render on it, that when you turn off that mesh render, your avatar disappears. I'll show that by navigating to my body, which is in C, R, body. And then you'll see here, here's my skinned mesh renderer. If I go ahead and I close out this material here by hitting this X, you'll see I go to check a vault. So that's a good sign that I've got the, the right thing going on there. So now we're going to go ahead and add that material set component to this slot. It's very important that you add it on the slot where that mesh renderer is that you want to control the materials of. So I'm going to go ahead and add it here. So I'm going to go to attach component and you're looking for one that is inside rendering drivers material set. I'm going to go ahead and pull out a second copy of Inspector by grabbing body, turning to MMC space, and pushing primary, because that gets me um, the ability to scroll down to the bottom here and see the material set and the mesh renderer at the same time. What I'm going to do here is hit setup for mesh renderer on the material set. And what this does is it looks at the um, material list, which is on the skinned mesh renderer, and it binds it to this material set component. Additionally, it will set the uh, default set in the material set component to the existing materials on that avatar. So uh, let's talk that through. So you'll see on the left here, it's going to get a little bit confusing due to the numbers, but um, we have set zero, material zero is this 62 material. If I pull it out, you'll see it's my usual texture with the, the clothing and the face, etc. I can also add another material set to this by hitting the add button here, and this will create one 
And if I hit add here, I've then got one zero. So this is material set one, material zero. That might make more sense on a um, avatar that has more than one materials. You'll just see multiple materials in the list here. I don't have multiple materials, so it's actually going to cause problems up there in the skin and mesh renderer, but that's what it will look like if you have multiple materials. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of those. Hopefully this shouldn't cause too much of a problem. There we go. Uh, and now we're going to start setting things up. So what we want to do first of all is make it so that um, we've got the material sets to play with and then we're going to wire them up with logics a little bit later. So the materials that we need are that wooden material. So we can go ahead and grab that from Neos Essentials. I'm going to browse to the root of my inventory, go inside Neos Essentials and just pick a material that's inside that materials folder. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick metal this time. It really doesn't matter. Um, I know the particular avatar that they were talking about, Stars was talking about, has a, a specified material there. I don't. Um, this is just, you know, for example cases. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this uh, rusty metal. And I'm going to put that into set one, material zero, by just dropping it in here. With that set up, we can actually try it out. So if I put this material set component next to my avatar, and I change this number here, active set index, from zero to one, then you'll see that I'm now rusty metal. So what happened there was um, when I set active set index to one, the material set component applied this material set one and then applied the zero material as in the first material to that skinned mesh renderer. So you'll see here it's PBS metallic on metal 22 and now it's PBS metallic on metal 22 in the skinned mesh renderer as well. If I go ahead and change this back to zero, you'll now see I'm back to normal. So now we need that uh, second material, which is going to be that away material. So let's go ahead and add that as well. So for that, we're going to add another set here and then an item to the list. So 2-0. And then we're going to make that away material. I don't have it to hand um, because my away material is actually just a transparent thing. It just makes my face sit there. It's kind of a sort of joke. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make it quickly. So we'll do create new material, PBS metallic. And then I just drop the transparency down. Feel free to play around with this as much as you'd like. You can grab an existing one from um, the simple away indicator. I'll link in the video description a, a video about the simple away indicator. We're actually going to be bypassing it for this particular tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to um, alpha. And then you'll see we've got that fade out effect. And I can go ahead and put that into set to uh, material zero. With that done, like I said, we don't need the simple away indicator again. We can go ahead and just X that out. Um, a good thing to keep in mind and a good rule of thumb, you can even see it here with simple avatar production, is that when simple is on the front of a component name, it means you don't actually have to use it. You can implement your own behavior. And a lot of people do that. They use logics, they use components or whatever to make it so that when they're away, different things happen. Maybe animation happens, maybe they crumple into a heap. That's an example of a complex away indicator. This is a simple away indicator that we've just removed. So now here, if I change this from zero over to one, you'll see I'm now rusty metal and I change it to two and I'm away from the world. So now we just need to hook up the logics to um, change this active set index. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to swap to my logics tip here and I'm going to grab the material set component with my uh, uh, logics tip. Move over here where there's a lot of empty space and hit secondary. Turn this the right way up here. And now we've got a logics interface card for the material set component. You'll see the active set index property is right there and that we can write to it um, and drive it and all sorts of stuff like that to determine what material set is, uh, in, uh, is visible at the time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to first of all move this to the right here and hook up that away material. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up the node browser. I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to grab the question mark colon, also known as the ternary um, node. You can find that node um, in a video tutorial as well. So I'll link that in the video description. Lots of links in the video description today, but that's fine. Uh, we'll also need uh, inputs for that. So I'm going to go to input and then we just need int. Uh, this green color here means int and uh, ternary here starts as float. So we'll just grab an int, plug this in and then uh, hook this up. So what this is saying right now is um, on false, which it currently is because it defaults to false, but we'll bring that out with secondary to make it clearer. It'll say, hey, if this is false, use this material set. If it is true, use this material set. So what we want to do here is if it's false, we want to use the away material set. So we're going to make that material set two. So when I change this to true, you'll see it. Hey, I'm back to being a regular um, avatar. And then when this is set to false, hey, I'm back to being the transparent away person. So we just need to hook up this to be um, actually detecting if the user is away from the world. Thankfully, there's an easy node for that. So we're going to go to the node for that, which is in users. 
and then it's is user present in world is user present in world there are other nodes here which are is user present is user present in headset and is user present in world for the away detection i recommend using is user present in world the other nodes here are to do with if they're physically in their headset um, so i'm emulating the simple way indicator which only cares if they're present in the world hence we'll use the is user present in world node so i'm going to spawn that out plug that into here and then we can delete this uh, input here. And then we just need a user to plug into here. So for that user, we're just going to use the get active user node. The get active user node returns the user that the, uh, is inhabiting the avatar in this case. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to the root of the avatar. It's called entity. And we're going to go ahead and grab entity. Spawn it in the world of secondary. And we get this interface card for the entity. And then we're going to go back. And we're going to go to slots, get active user and then plug that into here, and then that into is user present in world. So now, and this is kind of just a byproduct of get active user, when I pick up this avatar, you'll see I go back to the non-away material, and that's because I become the active user, and hey, I'm present in the world, so I turn into the regular material. So that's detecting if you're away or not, and doing some more advanced effects here. You can affect multiple materials, you could do a number, you could, I don't know, randomize it, whatever you wanted. Um, now we just need to do the, let's actually move this down so it's a little bit easier to read. Now I just need to detect, hey, am I wearing the hat? And then to apply the hat wearing material. So let's go ahead and get that sorted. The way that we're going to be doing that in this case might look a little bit weird. You could probably do it a little bit better if you're familiar with more complex nodes. We're going to be doing it with um, what I call sort of ternary stacking. It's totally fine, especially if you're new to um, sort of more complex logic. So what we're going to do here is grab this by clicking secondary on it. We get the reference to that node and we can spawn a second one. And we're going to go ahead and move the zero to false here and then plug that into here. And then what we're going to make this conditional here be is, am I wearing the hat? So, okay, I'm not wearing the hat, um, but I am present in the world by picking it up. Then it should be the regular material. But if I am wearing the hat, we want it to be uh, material set one. So we'll enter one into that inbox and then we'll say, hey, I'm wearing the hat. And so now when I pick this up, hey, look, it's rusty. So now what we need to do is make this Boolean reflect the state of am i wearing this hat or not let's go ahead and do that so to do that i'm going to go ahead and navigate to where the hat is so i'll swap to my developer tooltip inspect the hat Actually, i've got the mask there i think it's a button apparently i don't remember a button being in my head i'll look at that later um so here i've selected the hat i can go up a little bit and what i'm trying to look for is the hat snap target that's what we found in that snapper tutorial so what we're going to do here is we're just going to check how many children the hat snap target has so right now you'll see that the hat is parented to it and that means it's got one child hat if i go ahead and remove that hat you'll see it's got zero children and that means that there is there's no hat so i can plug this in hat that means there's one child, no hat, there are zero children. So what we can do here is just a quick set of nodes to do that. What we're going to do here is grab the hat parent snap target, push that in the world with secondary, turn it the right way up here. And then we're going to use just a couple more nodes, promise you a couple more nodes. We'll do get child. And the default value for get child second input is zero. So we don't actually have to put anything here. All we have to do now is detect hey is this value here is the zeroth child is in the first child is that null or not so in this case it's not null because we're in the hat but if i pull this hat off you see it goes to null so for that we're just going to use the is null node so we go to operators is null and then we can spawn that into the world and we can plug that in and plug that into here get rid of this get rid of that tidy up things a little bit i know you guys like your uh, tidy logics get rid of that as well i had a place based mover on it we should turn that one off never mind and now uh, if i go ahead and hold the avatar to simulate me being in it uh my hat is not on interesting get child is no ah not no we want not no not is no that will happen from time to time i'll mix up logics it's just uh boolean is just a or boolean logic in logic is just sometimes fun oh what happened there I made a mess. Let's, uh, why oh, well, you could even do that. All right, not null. There we go. There we go. So now I'm wearing the hat and I'm present in the avatar. So we've got the uh, metallic material. If I take off the hat, I go back to the regular material. And if I'm not in the world, I'm over to the um, uh, 
uh, away transparent material. If I put the hat on, whilst I'm away, it still shows away, and that's because we're going, is the hat on or not? And are we in the world? And then we're driving to that data set index. So there you go, that's how I would use the material set component to do that complicated setup of both the hat wearing logic, changing the materials, and the away material all working together. You might be able to do it differently. I'm sure a multiplexer or maybe something smarter could be used there. You could even use some write nodes or some other detections there. Try out some stuff. Another thing that's not included here is transitions. For transitions, what you would need to do is detect a change in the material set component and then fire some animation like a tween or a smooth lerp or something like that to um, make the material darker, lighter, whatever you'd like to do. I do understand that this was kind of a contrived example, but I do hope it helped you learn the material set component. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you've got any feedback, leave them in the comments. Do check the video uh, description for any links to videos I've mentioned. And I'll see you next time for another video that is hopefully not all about hats.